Greetings. Welcome, everybody, What's to our up? inaugural episode Hell of yeah. Gentleman and a Scholar. We are your hosts. I'm Alex Stanford, and I am a scholar. I am John Welsh, and I am a gentleman. <laughs> Here's the name of the show. All right. <laughs> this is a show where we're going to promote and talk all things cigar and cigar culture related and its impact on our grander society on the whole. Um, before we get into what we're going to talk about today, let's talk about our sponsor. We do have an official sponsor of the show, and that is Bailey's Cigar Room. Uh, they're located in Karen Crow. The address is 115 Derrick Plaza Drive. Uh, you can't miss it. It's the only one that's always open from 10 to 10. Heck yeah. And uh, <laughs> it's your one-stop shop for all your cigar and uh, cigar accoutrement needs. Um, they have a wonderful walk-in humidor. And the uh, the manager, Gary, is a good friend of ours, very knowledgeable about cigars. And, and so he can point you in the right direction to whatever your palate needs. Uh, Give them a shout out. And they also host. They have lovely uh, leather furniture there. They have uh, games there. They have chess. Um, they have televisions there. And so it's a great place just to hang out and chill. You'll always meet somebody new and smell something amazing at, uh, at Bailey's Cigar Room. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is our first uh, video podcast. Um, but, you know, hence the name. This is pretty much the aficionado person who got me into the game. Um, and I, I don't want to call it a game. It's more of a, uh, it's a lifestyle. Just it is a lifestyle. And like all lifestyles, let's get it rolling. We have today, uh, we have Villiger uh, Quitar Connecticut Cream Cigars. Okay. These were hand chosen by the, uh, I guess you say like the sommelier, the aficionado over at, at Bailey's. Um, we wanted to go for our first episode a cigar to really bring in the newcomer to show uh, what you're going to be experiencing with a cigar, what you're going to love about cigars, and really this is just the tip of the iceberg because once you wet your palate, um, the, the sky's the limit. You're going to be amazed at how deep down the rabbit hole goes. So we wanted to pick something that could get your experience started on the right foot, and so we have these lovely Connecticut's. Uh, cigars come in three main fashions you have your connecticut which is the mildest and you can see by the light golden browns wrapper uh then you have your sun grown which is a darker brown wrapper and then lastly you have your maduro which is the darkest wrapper and those depend on how long the wrappers are aged uh the longer they age the more they ferment and then the more oils they secrete richer the flavor uh the more smoke they produce so we've gone with connecticut's it's uh it's what we all started on back in the day and so back in the day for me uh, it was like three months ago <laughs> So what we're going to do is kind of walk the user home how you go through your paces on the full experience of enjoying a cigar because a cigar is a relationship. And like all relationships, there is a honeymoon phase, then there is a marriage phase, and there's a glow, grow old together and die phase. And so uh, what you want to do is you want to examine your cigar. You want to look for micro bumps on the wrapper. We call those teeth. And then you want to look for any uh, veiny stem-like pieces within the wrapper uh, you don't want to see those actually so the more veins you see um, that's typically a knock against the cigar and it's rating once we have inspected now we want to squeeze it a bit uh, depending on the humidity level will determine generally how uh, firm the cigar is going to yeah. be uh, higher humidities will give you a softer squishier cigar yep. um, lower humidities will give you a crisper firmer cigar okay also the how tightly they're rolled whether they're box press or hand roll will also give you an indication so now that we have felt that we're going to uh cut the caps off of these bad boys so you have the uh, anatomy you have your your band your sticker you have your wrapper you have your top which is your cap and you have your foot which is uh which is your bottom okay so we're going to cut our caps you only want to cut the smallest amount to give you a good draw once you've done that now comes the first pull, which is a dry pull, just because you want to see what kind of uh, relationship you're about to have with your cigar. So right away, I'm picking up a little bit of sweetness, maybe a touch of raisin. There is some cedar in there. And uh, wow, there's definitely some sweet cedar and a little bit of hay. Yeah. Um, we've had people describe the uh, dry pull any number of ways sometimes calling it petting farm other times calling it fish food uh <laughs> <laughs> but um at any rate that's what it is now you have to light your cigar so we'll talk about how to do that so what makes a cigar have amazing flavor is you want to have 
all the tobacco components burning at the same time. And so in a cigar, you have your outer level, which is your wrapper, and then you have your binder, and then the inside is your filler, okay? Uh, tobaccos are generally three different kinds of tobacco in choosing a wrapper, binder, and a filler. And so you want your draw to have smoke from all three. So you don't want to burn any one of them any faster than any of the other two because it's like three fuses you want burning at the same rate. So what you want is to have your flame not touching your actual cigar, but you want to see the charring uniformly on all the levels. And you want to turn it because you got to make sure everything's burning at the right rate. And you don't want to burn your wrapper too much. That's very easy to mess that up. I do it all the time. And then once you've got a nice cherry red that's going now we want to carburate it put a little put a little air in there and watch for the tongue of flame and there she goes so we're going to have a running discussion of this cigar as the podcast progresses amongst other things <laughs> amongst other things yes we have um, as we go through the thirds of the cigar, those are like the chapters. Uh, you'll have a different flavor that gets more pronounced, and we'll be describing that. So right off the bat, I'm noticing that uh, it is not ironic that they call this Connecticut cream. There is a creamy nature to this. It's almost like a toffee or a, a butterscotch, almost. Yeah, it's Kinda, not a bad Connecticut at all. I feel like a grandfather. Just, <laughs> just smoking this. I need my uh, corduroy cardigan. So now that you've got your cigar lit, let's talk about how you smoke the cigar. Uh, number one rule, don't inhale it. Let's just throw that off there. If we yes. could put a disclaimer on the bottom of the screen, oh, do there will be not a inhale there. this. Um, we've seen many seasoned cigarette smokers uh, err and uh, pay the price. Uh, they commune with the porcelain god. It is not a good idea to inhale these. Uh, we were actually the other night. We were at a, um, we were at that uh, where we go. It's like a local meetup for um, all the people who smoke cigars. And one of the guys was telling us he trained his lungs to inhale. And every one of us was like, "No, it's not meant to be inhaled. It's the oils are will give you the black lung." So, no, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. And basically, we're going to be having the next meetup in the emphysema ward because that's where he's going to be, uh, to be going. But um, so now that we've established you don't inhale, the next thing is the rate that you smoke it. Okay, the standard rule of thumb is two puffs a minute. Uh, you really don't want to inhale uh, too many draws in a minute because it's going to cause uh, what's called coring, where the inside of the cigar burns faster than the outside of the cigar and so you're going to get an uneven burn it's going to affect your flavor it's going to get a bit acrid a bit bitter uh, in other words not very good okay but if you keep your cigar cool to the touch so you can touch it near the tip and it's not hot at all that means you've got a good burn uh, and your flavor profile is going to be on point it's going to be what was intended by the cigar manufacturer uh, you also don't want to ash it this is not a cigarette so you want to let the ash accumulate on its own i like to keep mine upright because that shows your, that's like having your pinky out when you're drinking tea. This basically tells people like, I am super snooty about my cigars. They're up in the air to match my nose. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> very true. <laughs> and it works. We love it. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to be asking a lot of questions because I'm still in my transition of what I like, what I don't like. Cause I started off with Connecticut's and then I moved over to the Maduro's. It, it's just, it's a whole and I'm going to ask you so many questions. That's just what I'm going to do because, that's, that's I mean, literally, he's been doing this a lot longer than I have. and But I went I went from smoking, what, Rocky Patel, Connecticut, to to Cubans. Like, and I, it, like, We're not so talking about fast. those yet. Those are for another episode. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I literally, I've seen so many cigars in this crazy adventure I've been on that... My palate is just like, oh, oh, oh. And they just keep getting better and better and better. So it's like every time you think you're like, oh, I love this. You'll taste something completely different and then be like, oh, my God. The whole the whole world just changed. My whole my whole life just changed because this is now amazing. And then you also have the ones where you spend a lot of money. And you're like, this is going to be amazing. You're like, what is this trash? <laughs> so, yeah, I get it. I get it. I, you know, this is this is going to be something good. All right, well, do you have any questions or, or should we just start with the first thing of, of why cigars? Uh, on this, this isn't like the first, the first Connecticut I've ever had. This does have like a, like a, a, a distinct aftertaste. 
I, it's like butterscotch. Yeah, it's this is different. It's it's almost like a uh, a dessert cigar. Yeah, like that's this exactly would, this how would, I would this say would it. go yeah. really well with a nice dark roast. Um, you wouldn't even need to put any kind of hazelnut creamer or anything in the coffee because this provides a, a bit of, as Austin Powers say, it's a bit nutty. Um, it's a bit nutty. <laughs> but but it works. It's it's very nice. Also, you might notice we have glasses of booze on the table. That is not because we are incorrigible alcoholics. That is just a perk of the job. Um, no, you have these on because when you're smoking cigars, you want to have a nice whiskey because the flavors marry very well together. Um, you'll see a lot of people when you're when you're smoking a cigar, you'll see them dip the uh, the cap in the cigar uh, in the whiskey and then take a pull. And that. That just kind of, it's like adding nitrous to the gas tank. It gives you a little extra jut on the uh, yeah. on the draw, and uh, it's really nice. Um, we are drinking some pretty, this is like 136 proof bourbon. Uh, it, 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 it'll uh, burn the hair off your ass. It's, it's pretty intense, but uh, it's yeah. what we like. So yeah. This bullet, whatever. So how, 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 should, how, <laughs> how should we get this party started? Uh, let's, let's, let's start with the whole cigarettes versus cigars because a lot of people uh have a lot of questions because of course with the inhaling thing you don't inhale these at all and a lot of people who smoke cigarettes are saying oh cigars are really horrible for you and stuff but it's it's they're two different animals they're two different worlds cigarettes are don't have any flavor other than you know the nicotine well other than the fact that they they both use tobacco leaves there isn't much in common no. uh because cigarettes uh, the, the nicotine is ingested primarily through the alveoli, which is the, the air sacs in your lungs, whereas with a cigar, it's almost exclusively uh, absorbed through the subcutaneous tissues inside your mouth. Um, and so it, it, as far as like being bad for your lungs, if you don't inhale, cigars really aren't going to do anything to your lungs. Then yeah. they're, they will give you gum cancer, but, you know, anything worth having. Yeah, it's so part. a snuff um, chew. But, but really, to, to put a fine point on the difference between uh, smoking a cigar and smoking a cigarette, um, a, a cigarette is a vice. A cigar is a culture. Uh, it is a hobby. Um, you don't ever have somebody uh, text you, hey, it's Friday night. Would you have to come over and smoke a cigarette? Um, no one's ever been like, yes, I'm going to go pick up a pack of Camel Red or Marble Red and go over there. But it is very common that between me and my friends, we're like, hey, you want to get together and smoke a cigar? And it's just like, hell yeah, I do. Um, and then you go to the, the, the shop or you look in your humidor and you're it's like trying to pick out an outfit for a party. You're like, what do I yeah. feel like today? Do I want to go saucé? Do I want to go more refined? Do I want to go uh, more formal? The cigars have you covered any which way that you go. And so um, it, it's, it's much more than just getting a buzz. It, it is just, um, it is the activity. You know, you go out, you go shopping, you smoke a cigarette in the time you go from your car to the door of the store. But a cigar is a, a 90 minute, sometimes it's a two hour investment of your time. And so when you're smoking a quality stick, you don't plan anything other than smoking the cigar. And so you have guys who bring their cigars and they'll sit with you and you just enjoy your cigars together while you talk about other topics. And the topics tend to be about whatever is really interesting. A lot of ideas get batted around. It's amazing how many times you end up with some kind of quasi-philosophical discussion and you had no idea it was going to go there just because when you're smoking a cigar, it just makes you a bit more contemplative, you know? So uh, yeah. it, it, it's what happens, and you don't get any of that with a cigar, uh, a cigarette. And um, No, and, there, and cigarettes is so, it's, it's so quick. You're in and out. It's like, you know, a quickie. You know, where a cigar, it's like, this is a thing we're doing. We're smoking the cigar. And really, it's a it's a treat across all the senses. Because if you notice, the, the pre-light ritual involves seeing, it involves touching, it involves smelling, and then it involves tasting. But then, if you look at how cigarettes are, after you smoke a cigarette, you know, my paralegal, she, she smokes cigarettes, and after every smoke break, she does the same routine. She comes inside the office, she washes her face, she washes her hands, and she rinses her mouth. Why? Because it's disgusting. And she knows it's disgusting. And I don't make her do it. She just does it herself. It's her way of being like, I don't want to take my disgustingness into your world. I will leave it outside where the cigarettes go. But when you smoke a cigar, you, you relish those things. You relish how it makes you smell. You relish what your yeah. hands smell like. And you relish the way it tastes. Happened to me recently. I, after went to uh, where we were all smoking cigars, went home. 
and my girlfriend at the time, she was like, hey, you smell really good. And she pulled me in. She goes, that's a man smell right there. You know? And, that, I mean, you know, we talked about it earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just it's a manly thing, you know, and that's kind of like what the culture is. It's, it's But it's not only for men. So let's let's that get that correct. out there too. We, we we will get into that as well. I, I just want to say before we approach the, the 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 gender line in the hobby, the first person who asked me about to differentiate a cigarette from a cigar, I tried to put it as succinctly as possible. And I said, when you smell, or I'm sorry, when you smoke a cigarette, you smell like an ashtray. You do. When you smoke a cigar, you smell like a gentleman. And and it's it, true. It, it's true. You know, uh, I'm not just trying to be pretentious. It, it, it's a fact. Um, it is. It is. And, we talk about about women smoking cigars, and um, while it's true historically cigars have been a, a, a man's vice because the, the the men and women would separate, and men would would drink brandy and smoke cigars, and women would would go do other things. Uh, it's it's really crossed the lines a lot lately. Uh, a lot of women are getting into it, and it's it's a terribly sexy thing when a when a woman enjoys cigars because. Um, it's something that historically was just something women didn't like, and now that they do like it, it's impressive to men. Um, it also looks great in their hands. Um, you know. What's the rating on this, on the cigar? This one, I, I did not see it having a rating, um, but so far it's doing quite well. Yeah. Uh, I don't, so I don't smoke Connecticut's. I don't enjoy Connecticut's. I, uh, I find them to be too mildly flavored, um, but this is quite nice. So. so can you break down how you taught me to break down a cigar? Like, explain to the viewers, like, from the first, the middle third, and the last third. Okay. Explain that, because it becomes something different totally when you break it down. Okay. So, when you're, when you're looking at the flavors uh, of a cigar, we call them flavor notes. It's almost like ingredients in a recipe. As you smoke the cigar, as your palate refines, you'll be able to decipher different uh, flavor notes and they'll change and so uh, you'll have a cigar like Rocky Patel is known for this they have cigars that, that have a sweetness um, at the first third where it, it's it's kind of like I'm picking up dried cherry or you're picking up raisin and then by the time you make it through to the the end of the second third the, a lot of those fruit notes are kind of gone and it's got more of an almond uh, flavor almost like a uh, almost like a burnt almond a little bit um, it's it just matures as as the cigar burns you're going to have an accumulation of uh, of ash and uh, nicotine and tar towards the cap and those will kind of balance out the flavors mature them and so it's not going to taste the exact same you're not going to get that with a cigarette you know your your last draw on a cigarette is going to be just as nasty as your as your first draw um, so I'm, I'm really eager this is the first uh, villager cream i've ever smoked and so i'm very eager to see what it changes you know, as we move through it right now, this first third, um, if I was just to rate it uh, the way they would a cigar aficionado, uh, I would, I mean, this is the way I would do it. I'd look at my burn line, and as you can see, the burn line is almost exactly straight. It's not an even, so that's a very good sign. Uh, my ash is, uh, is, is kind of dark on one side and white on the other side. Typically, one like this, you're going to want to see uh, a brighter, whiter ash. But that's not true of... Uh all cigars, right? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. We're no. just talking about uh, the ones made outside of Cuba. Yeah. Um, you also want to look and see uh, how your ash is holding together, and it's a very firm ash. It, it's not about to fall, so that's a good sign. Uh, and then you want to look at how the uh, how the smoke is. And so, you want you don't want to take a pull when your when your cigar is burning a lot because that's a good way to over over burn it. But if you wait till you can barely see the, the smoke coming out, it's very faint like it is right now. That tells you it's about ready to go again. And you want to look and see what kind of cloud comes out of your mouth um, because that's going to tell you if you're getting a good burn. So, looking at that, that's a very nice nice uh, retro hail. And the, uh, you can see there's a little bit of a red ring around the wrapper. That tells you that you're getting a nice uniform burn. So first third, um, I, I would put this above 85. Uh, that, that's, what I would, that's what I would give this. It's, um, it's real nice. That's a pretty darn good score for a Connecticut. I, I, 85. I, 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 there's nothing about it I don't like. Yeah, no, that, I, I, I'm not. I tried when I first started. People were telling me, oh, I'll smoke this, smoke that. Um, and I had those sweet cigars, and oh my god, it was disgusting. It was like sucking on a f really syrupy, like fruit basket. 
because you yeah. had all kinds of stuff. It was just, it was not for me. Well, that, that actually raises... Oh, and, and sorry, if, if you're hearing rain in the background, it sounds like it's really coming down here. We are in Lafayette, Louisiana. So uh, this is probably going to be broadcasted everywhere because we're going to put it up on YouTube and all, all the other platforms, but I'm going to try and take that out. It is micturating on us from up yeah, high it's, right it's now. It's coming down raining pretty bad. Very hard. Um, but you, 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 you said something that, that raises a good point about, about flavored cigars. Um, a lot of guys smoke cigars and they, they smoke acids. Um, the Cuba Cuba is like uh, such a, a common cigar uh, amongst the... Uh, the newcomer and while um they taste good I, I i've enjoyed them before uh i prefer to avoid them now but um one of the things you have to be careful about is that you are microphone like with drinking whiskey like with enjoying classical music uh or cigars or artwork uh there is a training of your palate you need to get to where you can appreciate the upper echelons, the highest levels of whatever that expression is. And when it comes to a cigar, that comes down to your tobacco. And if you don't know how to taste the tobacco, then you won't know how to appreciate the tobacco, and then you won't love the tobacco. And so if you're smoking a cigar that has a flavored oil on it, what you're going to end up liking is the taste of that oil and not the taste of your, of your tobacco, and that's, that's not good. So we want to make sure that um, you stay away from that. If you're going to make a serious run at teaching your palate how to appreciate cigars, uh, you need to not smoke uh, an oiled, a flavored cigar. Um, sorry, but that's just, them's the breaks. That's the way you yeah. got to do it. But every every uh, cigar has, you know, certain types of oil to wrap, right? And those are those are native to the to the leaves themselves. So yeah, we're not talking about extrinsically externally added wrapper uh, oils. We're talking about just the oils that are are, are innate to this that, that are natural to so it. So, where are these cigars from? Like every like you know, there's American, you got Cubans, you got Swiss. Is this a Swiss cigar? Well, this this company is actually a Swiss company. Um, that's that's very counterintuitive. You don't normally think of um, you know Central Europe as being a uh, a, a niche cigar location, um, but it is. It is a it is a very well wound uh, and rolled cigar, almost like a Rolex, you would say. Yeah. Um, but the leaves themselves, I want to say they're from Dominican, uh, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. Um, so it's a Swiss company with Dominican leaves. Yes, it's and these are hand rolled. Um, which is always um, a nice touch. Uh, a hand roll cigar, though, can have some imperfection in it, whereas a, a box roll, uh, you'll typically have a tighter roll and it will be um, more flawless. But um, in the in the circles of cigar smokers, uh, the hand roll are held to a higher esteem than your your box press or your machine roll. That's awesome. So okay. I'm about to finish my first third here. And... Uh, I'm still, I'm almost there. <laughs> the butterscotch is failing, is, is, is fading off a little bit, but um, it's, it's very well balanced. Mm. Mm. That's good. And that is, that is excellent. That is, that that is excellent. Really so if this show were even longer, uh, we would have to um, basically sleep in the studio because <laughs> we would be uh, pie out. Pie out. they say. I'm not actually from Louisiana, but the culture here is so welping, welcoming and inviting that it just becomes a part of you. <laughs> like the the payao, that's a that's a Louisiana thing. That is, it means, that you, is it means you're completely smashed. Um, then you got couillons, which are a bunch of <laughs> what you call an idiot. Idiot, yeah, pretty much. And then you get the free songs from the couillons. <laughs> I don't know. This this place, I love it. I love it. But going back to to the culture uh, of cigars and what we love about them so much, um, you know, if you if you remember what it was like in college, and and you found somebody who had a sack of weed on them, <laughs> um, it was like you you would think, well, yeah, to pay money for that, you know, that was expensive. But yet they're the most generous people. You know, they they want nothing more than to share uh, what they love with with a, with a group in a social setting. And the funny thing is, cigars are very very similar to that because um, I, I I've had cigars that are really expensive yet when i have guests come over i want nothing more than to share that with them so that they can experience and enjoy what i love about them and so i never think twice about how much it costs it's like hey this is something awesome that i want you to try and so there's a very free love kind of giving atmosphere with cigars and um when you go places i i, I can't tell you how many cigars i've been given 
by other guys just because they they just they just want to have a moment. They know they just want to want to talk. Maybe call it a bromant. I don't know, but it's uh, no. I think that's what it is. I think it's the culture invites you in, kind of like Louisiana. It invites you in, and then once you get a taste of it, it's like a New Orleans. You just got I got to go back to that. I got I got to be a part of that again. And that's exactly what this is. It's a, it's a culture. It's a it's not just like you're going to get your pack of cigarettes at the store. You know what I mean? It, this is, it's a whole process. You go, you feel out which one you want. I haven't tasted that before. I want to see how that feels. I want to see how it smells. I want to, I want to, I want to inhale that, you know? Not inhale. You want, to inj- you want to smoke the damn thing. Right. You know what I mean? So, it, so I get it. Like 100% get it. And life comes at you so fast by the time you get to be you know in your 40s and you have a career and you have a family your weeks are blurs everything goes by so fast it's it's really hard to catch up with your friends it's really hard to just find time for yourself because it's like you get off of work you gotta you know hit the gym you got your kids extracurriculars the next thing you know you're just scrambling put the kids to bed and maybe watch 30 minutes of netflix with your wife before you pass out kind of thing but when you smoke a cigar it's like hitting the pause button on life nothing else matters other than just the fact that you're taking that time to smoke that cigar. And until that cigar is out, you ain't doing shit. You're not doing anything (laughs) else. And so it's a time for reflection. It's almost like meditative. Um, I've been surprised that uh, my my old routine, um, getting off of work, having a bourbon, has been replaced. I get off work and I just have a cigar. No drink, just a cigar on my porch. And it's just a time for me to... um, it's the closest thing to drinking lemonade on a rocking chair. You know, it's like a country time commercial, but it's, it's, it's for cigars. And um, I, I'm amazed at how much I've fallen in love with it, and I look forward to it. My drive home, I'm just like, oh, which one am I going to pick today? Uh, I don't Yeah, buy- that's what I said. you gotta, you got to get a plethora of them. You can't just have – well, I mean, you could just have one box that you buy that box every month. You're I'm like, that's what I love. Got to play the field. Yeah. Like playing the oh, yeah. field. I mean – yeah, that's because they're all different. Yeah, you never, different. you never know on a given day like what mood you're going to be in. Okay, so let's talk about moods and cigars. Um, well, you have different uh, types of flavors you're looking for in a cigar. Not not only are we talking, you know, your difference between your Connecticut's and your Sun Grown's and your Maduros, but just within Maduros, that's typically where I stay. Uh, you have your sweeter Maduros. Um, uh, you know, the Rocky Patel Vintage 1990 is. Uh, one of my one of my all-time favorite cigars. It's a little bit sweet and leathery. Then you have your your cigars like your Foundation Tabernacles that have a little more pepper in them, a little, a little bit of spice component to them. And then you have yours where there could be a little bit of an earthy component. And uh, then you have some where it's just like this amazing. Um, I, this this is just something that brings back such nostalgia for me when I was a kid my mom uh, was not a very good cook and she would make us biscuits canned biscuits in the morning from you know Pillsbury or whatever and she would often not set a timer so she would burn them so I grew up eating burnt biscuits and the thing is is that there is a flavor note to a to a slightly overcooked biscuit that you do not get if it's if it's if it's cooked properly and it's like a little bit of a charry kind of kind of caramelized taste and I got addicted to it and so every time my wife makes anything, I have her burn it because uh, not that she not that she you know can help it. She can cook it right. I just make her burn it. That's that's all on me. But I I, I love that flavor. And there are some cigars where it's like it's, there's a leather and there's like a charred burnt pretzel burnt biscuit quality to yeah. it. And I just I just smack my lips and and, and, and take it, it all. It's really coming down out there. If we uh, if we get struck by lightning, uh, call nine one one. We're not gonna get sure about it, but yeah, definitely call nine one somebody. Um, definitely but, changing. Yeah, so uh, mine is starting to change now. I I can it's completely different. Yeah, the butterscotch uh, is gone. Yeah, that's that's gone, and it's it's getting back to that Connecticut that I'm used to. But it doesn't have. Uh, well, I'm not used to that. I that I smoked in the like, beginning. If, the, some of the Connecticut's I don't like, like the Arturo Fuente uh, chateaus. That's kind of the 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 one hundred and one. Cigar for people to get into. It's like, oh, you're not gonna smoke a Swisher Sweet? Okay, all right. Swisher you Swisher. you graduated to your first big boy cigar. You're gonna get a Fuente Double Chateau because like that's that it looks so cigary, you know. But when you smoke it, you're like, no, oh, this this actually doesn't have a lot going on for it. It's kind of it almost tastes like burnt cardboard. Yeah. Um, and and uh, this doesn't really have that flavor at all. This is this is this is much nicer. Um, 
So is this the part where you, you, you rattle off some questions? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a gazillion questions. I'm just going to keep going through the questions as we go through. So what made you get into cigars? Like what brought you into that mindset of, you know what? I'm going to smoke a cigar. Okay. Um, well. Like who is your Alex? Like you're my, you're my, you're my guy who pulled me in. Okay. Um, I didn't really have one. Uh, you know, I grew up uh, being being different. I, you know, I have autism, and so socially, I I did not have the same uh, world that I lived in that other people did. I didn't have a whole lot of friends, uh, so I lived in movies, and I I would put my my talents through autism to give. I'd memorize films. I would watch them so many times that I'd memorize every word of the script, and I could perform it, and I would just recite it. And to this day. I, I will I will routinely work a, uh, a a movie line into conversation just because that's how my brain works. Well, watching movies like Oscar, 1993, Sylvester Stallone, one of his only successful comedy. They smoke cigars in that, you know, and it was just something about uh, that world of of men smoking cigars that just really resonated with me. I always thought it was cool. I always yeah. thought it was something I'd love to do that someday. And then I got to college, and this guy that I was buddies with, he he smoked cigars. Didn't really know him, but he he actually had a subscription to Cigar Aficionado. So I guess if I had to say anybody was was my Sherpa, it was him. Uh, and so he told me he told me how to light a cigar. He told me how to smoke a cigar. But as far as like really expand my palate, he didn't understand any of that. We didn't we did not we did not voyage out there into the unknown territory. It, we stayed very close to home. Um, I didn't smoke my first Rocky Patel till I was almost 30. Um, you know, so in That's college. Hey, it, hold on one second. I, I, don't, I think we got. Oh. Put my feet on the bed then. Okay. Um, <laughs> you know, so mostly it was Arturo Fuentes that we smoked, maybe a Macanudo. Not, and, and we weren't experimenting. I did not know there was a difference in rappers. I did not know that cigars had thirst. I mean, there was, I, I knew nothing back in college. And so, uh, really, it's been, it's, it's, it's been like two years, you know, that I've really been like, I'm going to get into this. And so, uh, I did so what when, I was So, when doing. you were in college, you didn't, you didn't have like, those moments where you, you just tried like cigars or whatever? Because I had that moment when I was in college. I yeah, I tried them. I actually had my mom get me a box of Fuentes for Christmas. And I thought when it was you were a... in college? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. See, I didn't go that far. Yeah. So I would watch my dad and his buddies playing pool all the time, you know, because I, I loved playing pool when I was a kid. And I would see them smoking cigars. And when they would, you know, like, ah, let's go refill our whiskey things because they weren't in the same room or whatever, I would go over and take a pull off. Of and, I, and, again, I didn't know you didn't inhale. So, like a stupid kid, I inhale. <laughs> I don't like that shit, you know. But now, now I'm like, oh, man. If I'd have known then, I'd have been sneak, sneaking these cigars, you know. I didn't know how to monitor uh, a hydrometer. Like, I didn't know how to get a humidor regulated. Um, and so I smoked probably half of that box. I had to toss the rest of them. They all got dried out. Um, I, I, I had been given a humidor by my mother-in-law back maybe 14 years ago. Because, like, everybody always knew that I liked cigars, but... I, I did not know what I was doing enough to really get into it. So, like, she got me a box of crap cigars and a humidor. It was a crap humidor with an analog hydrometer. It didn't work with the dam. It used distilled water. I'd never added enough water to it. So, like, those went bad. Um, and it wasn't until um, I made this, 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 this push to know about it where I learned about they have uh, silica gels that you add propylene glycol mixtures to so they kind of internally regulate so you don't have to add water to it every day. And so... Uh, it's it's super nice. I have I have two humidors that I that I keep you know maintained, and it's it's very easy. They're all digital, so I just look at the numbers, and the numbers tell me ready to add something. So you you've been in college a lot longer than I have. So at what part of your college career did you start to get into cigars? Late nineties. So late nineties. Undergraduate. Uh, undergraduate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. By the time uh, I started grad school in two thousand. Um, I, I had I had I had pretty much left. I didn't smoke much at all. So it was like special occasion type stuff. 
And so at that point, I was like, I just need to have some kids because I knew that, you know, I know you have a cigar when you have a baby. So, <laughs> <laughs> Cause, so I made a bunch of babies. Because, I mean, you have – what's your doctorate in? Because you have it I, – I mean, I have a, I have a doctorate in uh, topological algebra and then a, a juris doctorate, you know, just a law degree. Yeah. So, so he's smart. <laughs> smart ass. That's what I meant by smart. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like uh, I could, I could do a. Uh, this, this is, this is, this is a, a a commercial break for a really, really esoteric factoid that will mess with your mind. Okay, so um, you have a donut. Can you imagine a donut like an inner tube? Yeah. All right, and so it's got the hole in the middle, and the big ring on the outside. Okay. And then can you imagine a typical coffee mug? Yeah. How it's got a yeah. handle and a big reservoir for coffee. Well, we think of those two shapes as being greatly dissimilar because you can't obviously store coffee on an inner tube. If you pour it over there, the coffee will just fall yeah, everywhere. Falls but from a mathematical perspective, they are abstractly identical. Because that's just a conference? Like, what What do you mean? No. No, because you can take... Uh, oh, there was my ash. You can take a function that is one-to-one, onto, and continuous and map one shape perfectly onto the other shape. Yeah, that does kind of mess with your head. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, what do you use that for? Interesting conversation. <laughs> oh, so, man, yeah, yeah. That, that, that is. So are you good at, uh, because, I mean, you're a math guy, so are you good at, like, figuring out puzzles, like, super fast? Yeah. Okay. I got one for you. Okay. So you're on your way to heaven, right? Okay. And you come to a fork in the road. Road. Okay. One road leads to heaven and one road leads to hell. There's a house right in between the two roads. Okay. And in this little there's a little plaque and on the plaque it says you can ask one of the people there's twins inside so you can ask one of them one question of which way is to heaven and which way is to hell one of the twins tells the truth all the time and the other one lies all the time what would your one question be and who which one would you ask because you don't know which one tells a lie and which one tells so, the truth so I get one question and I have to find out which you're trying one? to get. You're trying to get to heaven. Obviously, I'm trying to figure out which road is the one to take. Mm-hmm. Um, so I have to. There, there's two things I have to determine. Then I have to determine which one of them is telling the truth, and, and then which road. But you only get one question. But I get one question. Okay. Um, well, are we? Are we, and we're presuming that that the, the two people they know which way is heaven, which one is which yeah. way is hell. Well, they both know. Well, they both know. But one tells the truth, always, and one lies. Always. Okay. Um, do, do, this is a little do, bit different do, do. Than, uh, <laughs> than, than the usual framing of this, <laughs> this riddle. Um, well, I, I don't want to. I don't want to kill too much time just with dead silence. As I there's no dead silence. I mean, this is. Um, I guess it's how you disseminate. Well, I would. I would first. Either. If I just had one question, see, normally, the, uh, the, the 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 puzzle is like there's two doors, and there's a there's a there's a head on one door, like in the movie Labyrinth, and there's a head on yeah. the other door, and you, you only get to ask one question, you got to figure which door you're gonna take. Um, but this one's a little bit different because they're not they're not attached to a given path. It's just two people in there. Um, just take a guess. All the all all the things that I'm thinking of asking are self-referential, where it forces them to have to say something that's that's about themselves that they know is true, and then obviously the one who's a liar, you're gonna know he's lying because he's gonna say something that's false about something that's facially true. You know, like that's that's typically the way that goes. But that's not gonna tell you anything about which road you gotta take. But so you're you 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 nailed it. You nailed it. But you just have to frame it in a way that would tell you about the roads. 
So it doesn't matter which one you ask because you don't know who tells the truth and who lies right. all the time. So basically, you go up to one of them. And you say, what would your brother say? And if it was the guy who tells the truth all the time, he's going to tell you what his brother would say and his brother would lie. Uh -uh. And if you ask a liar, he's going to lie about what his brother would say and all you do is the opposite. Yeah, but how are you going to know from the, the, the one answer you get? You just say, what would your brother say? Which way is to go to heaven? And if it was a liar, he would lie. Right. And then you but just how, do the but opposite. But how would you know he's lying? It's, well, because it doesn't matter. You're, you're going to do the opposite. Like, if it's the truth, he's going to say, hey, my brother's going to send you to hell. So he would say this. So he would tell you which way the hell one was, and you'd do the opposite, and you'd go to heaven. If you ask the liar, he's going to lie regardless, because that's all he does is he's a liar. He lies constantly. So you do the opposite, you go to heaven again. Right, right. The, 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 thing, about, the thing about that, that, that <laughs> I'm going in here. That I know you're not supposed to do that. That's, uh, that that's difficult is that, well, if you're asking the truth teller, the answer you get is going to be a lie. And if you ask the liar, that's why you do the opposite of it. The answer you're going to get is a lie. So they're, they're, you're going to get a lie either way. Yeah, but you're doing the opposite. Because the, the, the question and how you framed it, just like you did when you were asking uh, a framing question of, of them as a person to say whether they were the liar or not, you'd ask them such a question. But then that's how you're exactly framing this question. You're saying, like, uh, what would your brother say? And then that's when you, if it's the truth, he's going to tell you what his brother would say, which would be the lie. And if you talk to the liar, he's going to lie anyway because he can only lie. And he's going to tell you the, the fake, and then you just do the opposite of it. Either way, you're still going to heaven. Okay, yeah, I see now. Very good. <laughs> Very good. So this, this is kind of a, a screwed up segue of trying to do this, but that is kind of what, that was my approach to cigars. Like, you know, I heard all these different opinions about like, oh, what's a good cigar? Oh, I like them sweet. I like them this. The only way you're going to know is if you get out there and do it. Like you literally go out there and you, you try the different things. You know what I mean? Don't believe everybody because some people are the liars and some people are the truth tellers. Some people know what they're talking about and some people don't know what they're talking about. You know, they'll say, oh, this is, this is so creamy. Your palate might be different from mine. You know, like I might like them sweet. Like uh, your wife, Lindsay, she 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 liked the sweet cigar where I was just like, that's just too. I'm not a sugary guy, so I don't like sugar. But, you know, she liked it with a tip taste. Yeah, she liked it with a tip taste. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> we apologize for that. We do not apologize for that. Everyone this was ungentlemanly. Right <laughs> <laughs> I'm the gentleman. I'm still saying that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah anyway getting back to cigars so when i started uh not my kid when i was a kid and i didn't really get it but when i started uh smoking cigars i uh quickly liked the tame ones like it was the connecticut's is where i started and i didn't want to go any i i found those rocky patels i was like man this is this is awesome this is perfect and then I've tasted other Connecticut's, and I was like, wait, no, this is awesome. And then it just kept growing. That was such a fun time for me because I already knew where my palate landed. I already knew what I liked. But for you, you were you were just at a kid at this buffet and, and all these dishes you'd never tried before. So each one was in a way like, oh, well, this is my favorite. And I said, well, just wait, there's more. And then I'd give you a different one. You'd be like, oh. And so it, it, when you got to the point where you started being able to discriminate between ones you'd like to person ones you kind of like, <coughs> Actually, I don't think I like this one anymore, cool. you know? Yeah. That was really, really cool to watch as you kind of found your palate zone of what you like. Yeah. And, and, then, and then, you know, you moved on to, uh, to Maduro's and, and, and you, you, uh, you were accelerated. You didn't, you didn't spend long. Because I, I have, uh, my father used to say, like, I, I, I am the black sheep of my family. My, my sister is... Uh, one of the VP at HSBC. She's like one of the head people. Um, and my brother owns like one of the third largest uh, security firms out there. So I, I'm this entertainer slash musician slash film aficionado. You know what I mean? Like I, that's, that's what I do. So I never did things, you know, 
I like to get in there, try them, and if I don't like them, I immediately say I don't like them, and then I'll move on quickly. But I've always been that scatterbrained. This is the one thing where it's like you can be scatterbrained, and you're like, no, no, no I got to try this other thing. I have to try this. You have to try them all because you're never going to know. There might be something that just blows you away on your next cigar. So it's it's not like a one you know, trick pony. Like well, after all this time, I still don't have one because uh, people always want to ask, what's your favorite? And it, yeah, I it, thought the God of Fire was going to be my. And, and, and my I can't, favorite. I can't answer that question because, like, well, it just depends. It depends what I'm in the mood for, you know. Because I always, I always go to like food analogies, you know. I, I love, I love a grilled New York strip with a with a, 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 a shallot onion garlic glaze on it, but also love gumbo. <laughs> and if you're going to ask me to choose what's better between a perfectly grilled New York strip and gumbo, I'm going to tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's just how that goes so you know there are there are certain cigars um that are the top of the heap with that particular flavor profile but there are other flavor profiles that are just different that are also masterfully executed and my goal is i want to find out what is the top of the hill for every flavor profile so uh, a cigar that's a bit sweeter versus one that's more leathery versus one that's more earthy versus one that that's that's got a little spice to it you know i want to know it, what, what's, you know, almost like artwork. You don't just hang one painting in your house. You hang all of them. Just which room does it match best in? And that's kind of that's kind of what these are. And I want to make sure our audience understands that each episode, the framing of our show is a cigar. It's not all we're going to talk about. You know, this is our first show, so we're doing a lot of talking about cigars. But every show, what we're going to do is we're going to have a new cigar that we're featured uh, from our sponsor, and we're going to review it. We're going to smoke it. And then we're going to just talk about cigar topics or, or, or the kinds of conversations that you would normally have while smoking a cigar. So it might be politics. It might be philosophy. Uh, it might be film. It might be music. Uh, it might be just uh, relationship stuff because in our culture, things have changed so much with the dynamic and how men and women relate to each other. There's a lot of new, a lot of new stuff, a lot of new problems. Yeah. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about self-help, mental health. Um, yep. But every show is going to begin and end with a cigar. And the show is going to last as long as a cigar does. And that's how that's going to work. And I like that. I like that idea. As long as the cigar lasts. Well, I mean, that's because we're trying to emulate what the cigar culture is like, and that's the cigar culture. Yeah. No, 100%. You hang out till the cigar's over. And then I, I can't wait to have guests on. I can't wait. There's so many people that you wouldn't even think that are into smoking cigars, and they're into them. You're like, oh, Yo, you like smoking cigars? Like, and this and it opens up so it's a conversation piece. Oh, have you tried this? I mean, all walks of life. Like I can't tell you how many people I run into that ask me questions about because I, I take pictures. Uh, every time I smoke something different, I I take pictures of them and I get a bazillion people hitting me up going, "Have you tried this? Oh man, I love it. Oh, you're into it." And, and then they, you know, when Alex writes uh, a post, you know, he, he uses his. his vocabulary more so than I can and he's very articulate so he'll say words like persnickety and then that just becomes a thing <laughs> to where my cousin uh, actually uh, got it, uh, jumped into one of our conversations he goes he said persnickety <laughs> and then it just became a thing and then it just again graduated right into and now look who says that word your yeah. cousin <laughs> you might ever almost in everything we talk about and, and it's just because the uh it's it's the all walks of life, you know. It's it's any and he's a he's an he's an agent, uh, he's a, a federal agent, and and even he smokes them, you know. So he knows he knows a good cigar. Your cousin does. Yes, uh, he I, does. I will, I will give that for him. Um, this cigar today was selected by our sponsor, but not every show will have a cigar that has been selected for us. We're going to alternate. So our next episode, the mad scientist himself, moi, will be picking the the smoke for us. Uh, and I don't know what it's going to be, but I want to pick something that is going to be amazing and horizon expanding. So I want to I want to pick something that maybe uh, you guys back home who like cigars maybe don't know about. Maybe it's a hidden jewel. Maybe it's one of those that fly under the radar, um, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's just one of those. It's just it's just a damn good smoke, and we're gonna we're gonna light it up. So we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. And you never know where we're gonna be either. We're in our studio right now, but this is not always gonna look the same. We might be in Cuba. <laughs> we, we, we might we do. be. 
Don't give away too much, John. Okay. We have other locations that have been made available to us, and so um, well, we might we're be in South Beach. We're going to be doing all kinds of stuff. We might be anywhere. You don't ever know. You never know. You just never, never know. But speaking of cigar culture, uh, of all the topics that men with cigars talk about, I think it, it, it would behoove us to really share it out there with the world how we hooked up. How how we didn't hook up. We how we got there. We came for We done hooked up. <laughs> we done hooked up. But uh, the the whole thing was was that um, we had a mutual friend and um, and then he had issues with his ex wife and he needed an attorney and uh, he he we hit it off to the point where he wanted me to do it and then I got involved and I got to know him and I got to know his kids. Um, and then the rest was history really, but, but what's interesting is that the problems that he faced, um, that were posed not only by his ex-wife, but the, but the factors which gave rise to the failed marriage were all things that are the kinds of stuff you talk about with a cigar. You know, yeah. you talk about issues of like, look, I keep having this problem with my relationships. Um, I have this problem with my father. Um, I had this problem with my siblings, whatever. And there is a way of, of facing things that puts you in a position to move forward in a healthy trajectory that will see you have power over your reality. And then there are ways to just succumb to it and push it under the table and try to react to it rather than dominate it. And then you end up uh, basically being a, a, a pawn just subject to the forces of your life where you're always on your back foot. And and I, I would say that, uh, that John's done a fantastic job in, uh, in tackling the forces that, that gave him uh, his current situation and uh, and we're kicking ass as a result so yeah. well I'm just a Padawan in this one I mean like you're the one who's you're the Jedi Master I'm just I'm just along for the ride so far I don't think I've ever brought a cigar to you that you were like I don't know nothing about this I'm sure I... hey, the way the, well, maybe the, the God of Fire I found it when we were in Denver, but other than that, no, like, so let's, let's, let's motivate that. Let's, let's flesh that out because that's a good story. Okay. So this was back, what, uh, September. Yep. And we took a vacation, um, as, as my wife would say, a mini vacay, uh, yep. is what that would be. And we went to, we went to Estes park in Colorado, which is just outside Denver. And I brought, um, I brought a travel box of cigars. I think I brought like 12 we powered through those some bitches <laughs> quick, <laughs> and, uh, and we—I mean, we weren't just smoking cigars, but uh, it was Colorado. Yeah. So we ended up going to Denver, taking a walk around, and 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 I believe John had just had his first Maduro yeah, on I that did. trip. I did. And it was, a, it was an RP ninety. Yep. And I gave it to you, and you about came in your pants. Yeah. Uh, I was like, "This is what is this? This it, is different." It was. It is, and and that was. I had been waiting for you to get to the point where I could give you an RP90 because that was like one of my top three. And I had just watched you with all those Connecticut's and what you liked and you were a big fan of the Airbender by a little- Yeah, well that was in the beginning. That was in the beginning. It's still, it's a quality smoke, it's a good smoke. Uh, And I gave him the RP90 and it it was just like, oh, he was ready. It, 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 he was, he was, it was like a symphony for him. It was just the way he he, uh, raved about it. And so we go to this cigar shop in downtown Denver, and it was the poshest cigar joint I had ever. I've never, been in. yeah, I've never been in one like that. It, that was it had it was the a biggest full on lounge. It had shelves of these artisan crafted humidors, which were gorgeous, uh, and then it had this full room humidor that was like the other half of the store was the humidor. We go in there, and like I'm just trying to get my bearings to see like what are, what are all the offerings here. I didn't know how much it was going to be analogous to like a craft beer thing where each state has their own craft beers, and I'm not going to know any of them. So I wanted to see it, and then most of the stuff I, I had recognized. You know, there were a few uh, brands that I had not. But well, we're looking around, and there's this one shelf where on the top there's this there's this cigar, and and because we're boys. And this is what boys do. We 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 we're always looking for what's what's the what's the spectrum, what's the scope. And yeah. what was the most expensive cigar in that humidor? And we found it. Yeah. And and it was it was called a uh, God of Fire. 
which is a, a, a specialty line made by Arturo Puente. They also make the, uh, the Opus, which is their other super high-end line. The Opus was not there. I did not see that. But the God of Fire was, I think, $36 a stick. Yep. And, you know, he elbows me and points out, and I just look at it, and my first thought was, like, that's absurd. Why would anybody, yeah, why would anyone, would why would spend, anyone that? spend that on a cigar? That that is ridiculous. But then we um, we kept staring at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, I said, no, I need to know what a thirty five thirty six dollar cigar tastes like. And I was like, that's ridiculous. I would never do that. Is my wife looking at us? <laughs> and she was not. <laughs> so we went forth. And so he was just like, he was like, I don't know, I think I'm gonna get one. And so I could only there was only one response forthcoming to something like that was well i'm getting one if you're getting one <laughs> you get one i'll get one because you better believe i was not going to be a punk bitch and, and just watch him smoke he's gonna be like your own so cut that bitch in half we, uh, we got him and we uh we brought him back and we were like we're gonna wait until the the occasion is perfect for this cigar which fortunately for us came relatively soon because my birthday was right at the beginning of October and he was like, dude, it's perfect. We're going to do it then. So we, uh, we had a little get together with some friends. Most of them did smoke cigars, but they were not, uh, as invested in, in, in the experience as, as we are. Uh, and so like they were just, you know, smoking their cigars, like whatever. Well, we like the God of fires up and, uh, the closest way I could think of describe it was it was a love affair. It, it, it was just like every yeah. every pull was met with moaning. Effectively, it was it was yeah. just it was an experience. Yeah, it was a trek. It was, <laughs> <laughs> and it was at that moment where I knew that I there was no looking back. That. After experiencing that, I was like, okay, I wanna, I wanna know the full extent of what cigars can can offer us, and so we have, uh, I, I've met a bunch of people, and I, I've tried a bunch of different brands. Um, I, I've had the the best cigars that I can find in this area, uh, which which one of these days I will I will bring on this show, uh, the Padron 1926. It is, it is the closest thing that I've ever found to a God of War, a God of Fire. I'm sorry, yeah. it is, uh, it is. It's amazing. It, it is. It is. It is immaculate. It's just. It is without flaw. Well, I'm now getting to the last part of my uh, middle third, and oh, you. I'm, I'm gonna have to move the wrapper here in a second. I'm talking too much. I'm gonna kick mine a little bit. I am telling you, this is for a Connecticut. This is on point. Like I think this is really good for a Connecticut. Well, yeah, you were the one making fun of me for giving it an 85. But, I, I mean, because the first part, you're just like, oh, this is going to be one of those shtick things because it has that, that creamy taste in the be in the beginning. And then it just matures into it does. pretty good Connecticut. It does. All right, so quirky anecdote time. <laughs> we're going to uh, – there's really no way – to really listen to me at talk only without getting some idea who I am. And uh, I've already said I, I, I have autism, so like I'm, I'm a little bit of a strange cat. Um, but I, I approach things differently. See, hold on. You say things like that. It, for me, I just see him as Alex. I don't see him as a person with autism because I think it's actually really cool that your brain moves around so quickly and can find those patterns – that most people don't see, you know, and it, it makes all it does is make me want to go. I, I just look at him as Alex. I don't see you as anything more than that, you know. You're well, my I appreciate buddy Alex. that. I appreciate <laughs> You're my that. buddy Alex. But but you know, I've had to, I've had to live this life, and uh, that's all I've ever known, and it's 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 been burdensome at times. Um, but like when I was in uh, the first grade, I my my symptoms were a lot more pronounced than they are now. I've learned how to kind of mask them a little bit, so. Um, I would be considered like a non-presenting autist. People don't know, but but back then, um, the medical literature wasn't really up to date with Aspergers. It really wasn't a thing until the '90s, and by then I was too old. Uh, so I was just, I was the kid that justified classification. So like, depending on what you saw me do, you either thought I was a genius or you thought I was uh, retarded, and that was that was what I got from my peers. And it was very weird, but uh, 
when I was in the just just to kind of give give the viewers some idea of, of, of what it's like um, we we see we see patterns and we process rules everything has to be very formal by rules and a, a neurotypical uh, which would be a normal person they have a certain uh, neuro flexibility elasticity where they don't need set rules on how to do things it's almost like the way a man cooks scrambled eggs is the way a neurotypical does. You have some idea of the taste that you like, you have some idea of the taste that you don't like, and so rather than follow a, a, an algorithm where it's like you have to do this, you have to do that, you're just like, I'm gonna just do this. I'm just gonna put the eggs in there. Do I wanna mix them in a bowl or do I mix them in the pan? Who cares? I know what I'm doing. I just know what I have to do if I mix it in the pan versus when I mix them in a bowl. Yeah. Do you wanna add your seasonings? Well, I know, I know basically what I wanna do. You wanna, you wanna saute some vegetables? You wanna put some peppers and onions in there? You, you, you don't need a book. A rule set to do. You just you just do it because you you have this intuition that guides you based on how you want to change it, what you need to do. Well, autism doesn't work that way. Autism is extremely intractable. It's extremely rule based and it's formal and it's rigorous. And so, if you deviate from those rules, the autistic person is left. I don't understand. I don't do it that way. Uh, and so, our job is to try to find a way to see the rules. And if there are rules, we excel, which is why autistic people tend to excel in video games and mathematics because it's an entirely rule-based. There's no, there's no need for intuition. You just follow the rules, and you can be good at it, which is why I ended up getting a PhD in it because it was really easy for me. But uh, when I was a kid, and I was put in a, in, a, in a system that was only designed for one kind of person, I had a lot of struggles. So here, here, here's my story. When I was in the first grade, uh, I failed mathematics and it wasn't even really called mathematics it was called arithmetic you know yeah, arithmetic. Uh, but I got an F on a math test and my parents were very alarmed because they were like you're a smart kid why are you failing this and uh, one of the questions that I'd gotten wrong was I mean this is a first grade math question so you know it's not like splitting the atom or anything the question was circle the larger number yeah. and it just had a one a five a seven basically like that and I had circled the one and my parents were very very dismayed at that answer because they're like you you know that what, what that nine is bigger than one why would you circle nine and what I said was but it said circle the larger number and I took my ruler out and the one was a little bit bigger than the nine so I circled the one and my parents laughed at me because, well, they didn't understand what they were dealing with. And then they went to my teacher and explained it to her. And then she had a good laugh at it. And, and so that was basically my life growing up was that people laughed at me because they didn't understand that. I Because there wasn't a rule. You didn't, that wasn't, they weren't very specific. I saw it. I saw it, it. I saw a different question than what everybody else saw. So I did a different question, you know. And that was just, that was routine. I, I did that all through the college. I was doing stuff like that. And um, so basically my whole life growing up was, was ad hoc adjusting. Seeing the mistakes I had made and then implementing a rule so that I wouldn't make the same mistake again. You know, this actually got happened. This actually happened after I got married. Lindsay had, uh, this is like so stupid. I can't believe I did this. But she had, uh, had given me an errand, a task to do a chore while she was gone. And she said, um, while I'm gone, could you take the clothes out of the laundry and put them in the dryer for me? And I, I never did laundry. Um, so I was like, sure, yeah, I can do that. I, I know how to, I know how to do in, in and out, whatever. So I do it, and she comes home, and she goes to the dryer, and she yells out, Alex, the clothes are still wet. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, the clothes are still wet in the dryer. You didn't run the dryer? And I said, you didn't ask me to. <laughs> yeah, see, yes, you put it in the My ex wife would have been like, look, smart ass. <laughs> That's what she said, too. That's what she said, too. Oh my God, we fought. And I, and I, and I, the whole time I was like, I legitimately didn't know. She's like, what are you retarded? I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm just retarded. I really did not know that that's what you were asking me to do. But it's because whereas a normal person would take that formal request and intuit new meaning that yeah. wasn't stated, I didn't see that because I don't think that way. And, and now, basically, I've like seen enough of those mishaps to know that I have this issue, so I try to troubleshoot it. But there's always another one coming, and uh, I never know what it's going to be. So we're now in our fully into the middle. I've got about an inch to go before my band. The band is, is consensually known as like the, the end of the cigar. Uh, if you go beyond that, then you go into the nub, 
territory, which is uh, smoke at your own risk. Yeah, I don't, unless it's an amazing cigar, there's no way I'm nubbing it. There's not, no, it gets you know, hot. It gets too hot, it's too it's easy too to hot. burn yourself, yeah. and uh, you end up having to take these little baby puffs. Because if you take too big, it, it, the flame comes through and then burns your lips, and then it's just like that's yeah that's enough. Stupid. Enough is enough. So unless, but there have been cigars where I've been oh, even the nub. I'm like, Ugh. and your your father-in-law, he was putting that in. His, <laughs> he'd take the nubs and put them in his pipe. Hey, waste not, want not, man. Yeah, that was brilliant. Because then I smoked his pipe with him, so I got to finish it off, and it was great. Especially when it's a two hundred dollar cigar. <laughs> we'll get to that, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we'll, we're we're taking you. We're we're gonna move ahead from the entry level Connecticut's, and yeah. we're gonna we're gonna bounce around. We're we're gonna let you see all different kinds. Yeah. Um, and, and also, if it listen, right down there in the comments, just put it down there. I, whether this is on uh, YouTube or wherever we're gonna post it, um, right. Put it right down there in the comments what you want us to look at. If there's a cigar we haven't even mentioned or you just want us to review a cigar, even if you're from a whole other country and you're watching this and you want us to review your cigar, put them on there because we'll give you the honest opinions of us. And pretty much between the both of us, he's more refined. I'm more, I want to taste it all. And I'll give you my blunt, honest opinion of what these cigars are. Because I went, and now with these Connecticut's, I'll, I smoke them, but they're not, it's a different flavor, I'll just say that. It's a different flavor from the Maduros that are just, can be amazing. All right, now I have a question for you. Uh, okay. Okay, I know we didn't talk about, you answered questions, but mm -hmm. what would you say your um, favorite aspect of the cigar culture is, the whole thing? For me, uh, so, okay, so I, there was a brief uh, time, he knows this already, uh, that I was in the military. Um, and for me, what I miss about the military isn't the getting yelled at or anything like that. It's pretty much the um, camaraderie. So the, the brotherhood and the sisterhood of, of, of just everyone getting together, being able to, you know, kind of shoot the shit, so to speak, um, and all enjoy their own things and enjoy the camaraderie so um that for me is what it's about um and then being able to talk about these things you know i i don't think i would have ever gotten into cigars as much as i have um if it wasn't for you like you you brought me into this world um you could take me out. No, I was about to say, I could take you out, boy. <laughs> I could take you out, boy. Uh, but no, you brought me into this thing, and I, and I thank you for it because because uh, you meet so many good people. You meet people that are come from all walks of life, all over the world, um, and they all bring something different, and they all give their opinions, and we can all talk about it. Like the guy the other night was like, ah, I trained my lungs to inhale them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, but... You just meet them, and then you can help them out and be like, well, hey, have you tried this or whatever? And it just gives you a conversation piece. It's like why if you have your office, you have that one thing in your office that uh, everyone, it's a conversation starter. You know, it gives you that moment to say like, oh, and you reflect on that, then you go right back to business. It's that same thing. It's, it's about having moments with people. It's the same thing in why I pick film as a career. Uh, it's that one moment that you get to tell this story that's probably been told a million times, but it hasn't been told the way you tell it. And that's what, you know, being an individualist, you know, like being individual, just, just telling your story. And every one of these cigar makers are doing that every single time. They tell their stories through these leaves. Sometimes they're aged. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're ready. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're sweet. Sometimes they're bitter. You know, it's, it's all that stuff. It's just like people. There's a plethora of people out there in the world, and that's where I get it from. So, yeah, that's that's my answer, is the camaraderie and to be able to have a plethora of people telling these different stories over a cigar. And that's what it is. Nice. Nice. All right. Let me give you my answer. Some prefatory remarks are required. Just <laughs> I'm, I'm very verbose. Uh so when I was when I was younger, you know, like I said, I loved film, I loved movies, and um, I loved music. But the thing is, is that when I would watch a film, 
I, I, and I still, I'm still this way, I don't just watch it and enjoy the story and then move on. I, I savor everything about it, the way a shot is set up, the way the writing builds the tension, the way the plot gets advanced, the way the story has to, has to, has to cover itself. For instance, we were watching Home Alone with the kids this past week, and the story's stupid. It's because it's just like the kid it's a John Hughes. The kid film, calls. But he was he was good at telling. Kills call the cops at the end of the movie, and you're like, why couldn't he have just called the cops beforehand and be like, hey, look, these guys are gonna rob my house at nine o'clock. You know, be over here. It's just kind of weird. Well, because it, it. Well, if you really want me to stick up for John Hughes, since my name is John Hughes. <laughs> um, uh, I, I don't mean to cut your story off. I'm just I'm basically telling you that the whole setup and the reason why he didn't call is because, uh, you know, he is doesn't want to get caught because his prayers got answered. He went. He, his wish was, I wish I was alone. I didn't have to be around my parents. And then his wish got granted. And he knew if he did involve the authorities, he would have that dream taken away. They would. He knew that they would take him. The cops would take him and put him in a home or whatever. He knew that. He's a really smart kid. And the way they show that on camera is that he start, you, you develop in the first, which is my favorite, you know, the, the act. The first act is the whole setup and, inter, and, you know, you're introducing your characters. That's my favorite part of the um, the of film because you got, you know, three, well, there's different kinds of ways to do it, but you, know, you got your three acts. So the setup and the, and the introduction of all the characters tells the entire story right there. And and pre, you know, and, and this and is it, exactly what I'm getting at. Okay. Everything you're saying right now, we can't do this while the movie's playing. We'd have to pause it because if we kept talking about this, we'd miss parts. Mm -hmm. But I love talking about that. How each component of the story was put in there for a reason, and trying to figure out why. Why was that put in there? How does that move the story? How does that serve the the? Oh the, yeah, that's all amazing. But you have to do it after the movie's over. Otherwise, you just break up the continuity of it, and it takes ten hours to watch a film. Oh yeah, writers, okay. writers, they write in these great scenes, and they're like, "Damn, it's not moving the story." Shit, I got same cut thing it. with music. Okay, I love, I love music, and I love listening and sharing music with people. But at the same time, it's like I can't talk about what makes the music great while we're listening to it because we're listening to it. I can I can take you to a show and go see a band that I really like, but we're not going to be able to do a whole lot of talking at the show because it's too loud. We're too busy focusing on the show. But a cigar, this is like the one one thing that I can really really love, and yet the experience of the cigar is such that it provides a way for you to share it and do it without compromising the enjoyment factor. Yeah, we can. Because you're only taking two puffs a minute. So it gives you a lot of time to talk. So you can enjoy and share at the same time without compromising either one of those things. Yeah. I've, I've, I've never had anything really like that before. You can't, you can't, you know, be eating a great steak and then take 30 minutes to talk about it. You're going to come back, your steak's cold, you know? And so this is, this is one of those things where it's like your, your ability to enjoy it and share it merge, mesh perfectly together. And, and, and I love that. And so that's, that's the whole social element, being able to share it with somebody. Um, and I, I did not see that being a thing, you know, because otherwise I'd have probably explored that years earlier. But um, it's been just, um, that's all I want to do now. Every weekend, all I can think about is like getting together, and, you know, I've got so many guys who, who are waiting on me to plan the next outing where we go meet up somewhere. It's just, uh, yeah. I can't wait till we do some of the things we're about to do. <laughs> not, not so excited about this. All right, how do you rank? Uh, now I'm getting into my last third. You're in your last third. What do, what do you pick up? What do you got? So uh, mine is coming back to uh, the aftertaste again. A little butterscotch? Yeah. Yeah. It's starting to come back. It's weird. It took a third off. Yeah, it did. The middle third, <laughs> you're like, you lose it. And then all of a sudden it starts to come back. You're like, what in the hell is but this? But it's, it's, it's a toastier flavor like the butterscotch has a little bit of a toasty element to it whereas before it was pure sweet yeah no this is yeah it's 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 there i, I mean everything you just said is is right so what, what, what would you score it <laughs> oh man that's the hard part putting you on me. the spot man and you got to look at everything everything they used to score it you know the way it's been smoking the way it's been ashing the way it's been burning the wrapper um the flavor notes the different thirds you gotta look at all that stuff I don't know if I would go to an 85. 
That's what I'm asking what you think. Yeah, uh, I would probably put it at 80. If I'm being 100, I mean, I'm not saying it's not bad. I mean, there's hella great. I would not keep it at an 85. When I gave it an 85, I was just basing it off of strictly that first third. And it was such, the the butterscotch flavor was such a nice little vacation from the typical cigars that I smoke that I I was like, oh, this is really cool. But now that it's changed, it's mellowed, uh, and now it's back. Wait till you take it a little bit further in, because I'm really picking up on that cream again. I mean, it's like, and the aftertaste is perfect. I'd give it, I'd, I'd go between an 80 and an 85. That's where I would give it. I'm going to stay, I'm going to stick at 80. Because I'm, I've now become like a snob. Okay, so I guess we have to define how we're using our, our, our oh, standards. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, definitely. definitely so, we definitely so have to do that. When you, when you rate a cigar, it's out of 100. And yep. uh, typically you have, uh, it's, it's in 10 point jumps. So you have a 90 and above is outstanding. That's like the, the creme de la creme, the, the best that you get. Uh, then 80 to 90 is very good. And then you have 70 to 79 being good, and then beyond that. The way I use it, if it's below 80, I don't entertain. I don't, I don't mess with below 80. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've had some where um, they were given a higher rating, and I was like, I don't know what you were smoking oh, when you smoked that cigar, but it wasn't just that cigar. You were smoking some wacky tobacco because there's yeah. no way this is a 90. Um, and if you've got... It, it, I, I love to analogize it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, we, we our 4K is now off, and our 1080 is still going. <laughs> so the way you can tell the difference is, uh, so we have a monitor up, and so when the monitor has a red ring uh, against my uh, Atomist Shogun Inferno, um, it'll let me know it's still recording. So now we're going to go and use our 1080 which is just regular standard video, which, I mean, if we're doing the compression rate anyway, you're looking at something that's, this is my, this is my neck of the woods. This is what I went to school for. So we're just going to go off our, our main camera, which is um, just now taking us to 1080, which is what we're going to get compressed to anyway on the, right. yeah, and, you're gonna be down, no, I mean, they do have it, but I mean, not for this long. <laughs> Anyway, go back. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. <clears throat> well, I'm just talking about the rating scale. You know, um, I I would I would smoke this again, and if it's below eighty, I wouldn't smoke it again. Yeah, no, I I'm, I'm gonna this, stick this, with my eighty. This I would say this is better than. Let me get my burn Rocky back. Hotel, Connecticut. I would say I enjoy this better than the Monte Cristo, Connecticut. That's a good that's a good thing for us to talk about real quick. When I started out, when I would look at these ratings on cigars that you would talk to me about, I would always be like, "Oh, well, yeah, man, of course that's a 90." Not knowing what you're talking about, it's just like, "Oh, man." Now I look back and I'm just like, Pff, "I don't think that was a 90." <laughs> it was more like an 82. Right? But this one's yes, yeah, that's a, a very good 80. Like if you were to compare this with a uh, a Fuento, a Fuente Chateau, uh, their Connecticut, I might give that a seventy. Like it's, it just it's it bores me to smoke it because yeah. there it's just it's just unimaginative. Um, it's uh, it's like yep, something's burning. That's pretty much what you get out of it. Yep. But this actually has flavor notes uh, to focus on that I can say, like, ooh, I like the way that tastes. You know, there isn't much to a Chateau where I'm like, ooh, that's tasty. It's just, hmm. reminds me of just burning paper. <laughs> I've, been, I've had cigars that taste like you're just burning paper. And you're just like, okay, I'm done. I don't really need that. And then when you're done with your cigar, one of my favorite things is, is just smelling your hands. Oh, oh yeah. man, the way your hand smells just like, yeah, I've had I've literally had a uh, a girlfriend at the time, like literally just pull me in close and just take a big whiff, and she's like, "Oh my god, you smell so manly." Let me let, let let me let me put it this way for the viewers. So, when when I smoked cigars twelve years ago and didn't know what I was doing, my wife would literally make me take a shower before I could come to bed. Really, she hated the smell of those cigars. 
now she invites it. She's like, yeah, smoke a cigar. Don't she like it the way it smells? She tastes. like it the way it smells. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I like it too. <laughs> oh, it's man, just, that's crazy. It hits all those notes. Uh, but yeah, in the comments, uh, if there's if there's a particular question you have or a cigar recommendation you want to make to us, if you want us to review it, um, I I review cigars all the time. Um, feel free to and if and if you you uh, have anything else you want to comment about the show, um, by all means. Um, one of the things that we want to incorporate in is just. just uh, Topics that are interesting to cigar smokers, things that yeah. you would talk about when you are enjoying a cigar. Yeah. Um, I know that we've talked a lot about postmodernism. We've talked a lot about um, politics, the the way the world has changed, foreign policy. You know, I have a very pronounced how it back- affects this. Yeah, the cigars you get. Yeah, I have a very pronounced background in the, you know in the uh, the nerdy arts, so philosophy, science, history, stuff like that. Uh, John is a, a very well versed person in foreign policy and overseas relations of uh, the military and uh, the way our country handles its business. Um, so there's no there's no real uh, roadmap of how this is going to go. It, it's just the kind of stuff that we think people are going to get interested in, and so. Uh, I'm hoping that at some point people are comfortable enough with the way we handle our topics that they want to provide not only cigars for us to talk about, but also given political questions. You know, yeah. um, I, I personally, we haven't even started on that because we could talk for hours just about that. I, I find the the interplay between the Republicans and the Democrats, the Democrats for control of the country, fascinating. Um, and Me too. Because I don't particularly fit in with either camp, I, I find it's very easy to be uh, impartial and objective, and calling out everybody on how full of crap they all are. Uh, the problem, though, is politics that, are just politics. <laughs> the problem is that most people uh, they don't feel that detachedness as I do. They typically identify with a team, and so uh, I, I piss a lot of people off. So that that happens a lot. Okay, okay so let's let's take a minute, and I have to uh, give a shout out to Bailey's, uh, the sponsor for today. Uh, if you ever want to go and do exactly what we're doing, having a great time. Uh, just having a conversation about scars or you need to just unwind from the day. Uh, Bailey's is the place to go. It's right there in Karen Crow, Louisiana. And uh, it's right off of, uh, what's the street? It's right off of Veterans. Yeah, right off of Veterans. And it's it's the most laid back place you could ever go to. Um, and everyone in there is knowledgeable about the cigars that they carry. Uh, they also have a plethora of people. I mean, it doesn't matter all walks of life again everything i talk about of what i love um they're all in there so go to bailey's right there in carico louisiana and you definitely will have a good time another thing to add about bailey's is that um it's not legal to have a bar in lafayette that that serves cigars. Yeah, during the you pandemic. can't smoke in these establishments yeah. but the way bailey's gets around that is they do not provide liquor but they do have uh storage so People routinely will bring their own whiskey, and you can drink and smoke there, uh, and they'll chill it for you. They have refrigerators. Uh, we did that, and it was it was really great. It was yeah. Really we great. had a group of guys. We just went over there one night, and we just cut up. Yeah, we just brought a few bottles of stuff and and and, and cut loose. And and the cool thing is that I don't like using that terminology, but really, it's like a safe place. It's a safe space for just the stuff that guys want to talk about, and yeah. um, it it can be as trivial as just. You know, your sports team didn't sport so well, and they got out sports, and you want to bitch about it. Uh, or Especially it, being an Eagles fan in Lafayette, Louisiana, because they're going to try and bring you to the dark side. And by the dark side, I mean going to the Saints. <laughs> <laughs> it's our time. We have we have just been given the shit into the stick the last couple of years. and Which I'm slowly becoming a Saints fan, I can't lie. But I bleed green. I grew up right next to Philadelphia. So it's like, you can't do anything but be a Philly fan. (laughs) Hey, there are worse teams you could like. You could be a Cowboys fan. Never, ever. And I've had my rock star days when I was in a rock band. uh, I was in a band called Stone's Throw. Uh, That sounds like an anecdote break. (laughs) When, uh, when, uh, when I lived in Austin, Texas, uh, I was in a rock band called Stone's Throw, and everyone there was a Dallas Cowboys fan, and it was it was either that or UT, and it, 
don't go against the grain there, you know, but I, I did every time and it actually was a conversation piece too. So, yeah. I bet. Especially then, because we were, we would always win, you know, our division, but we would never make it to the Super Bowl. And then all of a sudden, we made it to the Super Bowl and we won that thing. <laughs> so, you know. well, yeah, y'all had some interesting seasons. Y'all had that one year. Was, was it the one? Is that the one you won it when, when Wentz took you to 14 and 2 and then got hurt? Yeah, and then Foles, and then Foles came in. And Foles came in and, and crushed and everybody. Was, yeah, I was just actually talking about this today. Um, it was the the year uh, Chip Kelly fired that SOL. I guess he's SOL because he had he had everything. He was a head coach that also had powers like a GM. He could pick players he wanted, and he was he was given full reign of doing his uh, coaching the way he wanted to, which was basically like a uh, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna run my team like a college team. Where it's very fast, very in your face, and he quickly learned that that's not the way the NFL is. You're, you got the creme de la creme, the best of the best. Even the best of the best can't hold up with the best of the best of the best of the best in the NFL, because that's what you that's what you have. That's all. The, everyone on the every team is the best that's ever done it because they have a crap ton of people they can pick from. Long story short, then we brought in uh, fresh uh, fresh blood for the head coach position. And then from there, it went to the stealing process because the GM says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take everybody that that was worth a crap, That's their their contracts are up, and they took it from the Patriots because they just won the Super Bowl. Guess what they did? Turned around. Boom. We stole them all. And that's how we won the Super Bowl. And we put them on a year contract, won the Super Bowl. Next year, we had to get rid of them all. <laughs> <laughs> so then we went back to like our, you know, like this year, I think we picked up... Um, uh, Jackson again, and he he talks so much smack about us, and he just get gets hurt like in the so second game. Of the season. What happened with Wentz? I thought he was good. Mm-mm. That's what I was. That's what I was explaining to the guy today. I said, "Listen, the reason why Wentz looked good is because we had amazing players that we took from the Patriots. Like we took amazing players from them, and then it made Wentz look like a god." Then Wentz got hurt because he was trying to play up to their caliber. And when he did that, you know, he I, I, I think he did something to his ribs or whatever and couldn't throw real well. So Nick Foles, who is an amazing, amazing big dick Nick, was getting it done when you needed it to get done. And he's quick on his feet. And you give him the right players, he'll win you a Super Bowl. Why we didn't see that is because, you know, they thought that Wentz is going to, Carson Wentz is going to be this guy. I've, I found that the uh, level of depth in uh, sports analysis is uh, lacking, I think, because that season, everybody attributed their success to Wentz. Everybody yeah, was on his jock that he was so good, and even though Foles was solid in the postseason and got him the ring, they were all like, yeah, but Wentz deserves a shot. He was the man, you know, and so they all were like, get rid of Foles, keep Wentz and now well Wentz is showing his true colors right now yeah you, you see I, I, him by I think his he's play the, right now I think he's so the next he's iteration of Jameis Winston minus the touchdowns he's just throwing picks <laughs> yeah he's he's not what everyone thought he was you know and 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 they look at uh Nick Foles uh as that guy so how many wins do you think it's going to take to win the NFC least this year oh we're not going to get it this year no, but no. But whoever, how many wins is it going to take for a team? The football team is probably going to take that our division. Well, they're 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 winning right now with four wins. I think I think you may see a six and ten team make it into the playoffs. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. A six and ten team is going to host a playoff game. It's insane. They may end up having to face Tampa Bay because it looks like they're going to be one of the. It, the what crazy games. times we live in right now. You know what I mean? Something that was honored. You know, I know, I know. It's kind of a, um, it's kind of like a, something you're not supposed to talk about or whatever. But you know, look at uh, the Redskins now, the football team. You know, we, you know, I know. Growing up in the Northeast, we we honored that team. My brother is still a Redskins fan, even though his it's the football team now or whatever. Just because a group of people, uh, n- not all. The group of people think that something is wrong. They they protest against it. You can just take away a name of something that's been honored. I mean, there's people that are 
die hard Washington Redskins, well, Washington football teams uh, fan. And they're just, you can't, you can't even bring up the Redskins name up there now. It's just crazy. Whoa, that's, that's a big topic. I don't know if we have enough time to fully. Yeah, we definitely don't have time for that. Go, but, go into that. But, but, but you're right. You're right. There is a whole, there's a whole lot that went into the decision to, uh, to take away that name. And ultimately it was money because the sponsors of the team, the people who put their name on their field, were threatening them that we're going to pull everything if you don't change this name. So I know that the, I know that the team resisted it as long as they could, and I applaud them for yeah, that. Yeah, but at what? At, but at what? At what cost? Like, I mean, how much history and knowledge of our land? You know, like it's like uh, you don't say Glingo. You can't Dude, say it's changing that. a lot right now, Dude, No, mine's already there. It's been there. Like my my butterscotch flavor is gone. Now, oh, no, mine's not. Mine's still there. It's going strong. But it's getting it's getting warmer. Each draw is rather getting, rather than yeah, it's getting warm. But rather than getting like bitter, it's getting it's getting a taste that is kind of reminiscent of a Habano. The way it's got like an ammonia finish, where it's like like a an ammonia like, finish. like a like a pine saw. Like like when you uh, when you uh, you freshly mop floors and you and you smell that disinfect that come up there. It's almost like a hint of that right at the, right at the end. It's kind of kind of pungent. But it's not it's not bitter so it's kind of like a light like a menthol mentholated kind of kind of taste that's what habanos are known for um <coughs> i kind of kind of get a little bit of that there no i'm still it's still i still get You're still a little butterscotch there. oh yeah it's still there anyway so we could talk about i mean we could talk about football all day long we could talk about uh, film i mean i'll blow your mind with the things that i know and the business of that and but these are all conversations pieces that you're going to get while you're smoking a cigar with somebody you probably just met or been friends with for a while, you know, that kind of stuff. It's just every day is a different day and uh, every cigar is a different cigar. Even and that's that's true as, for uh, cigars because I've had the same cigar and I had different experiences with each one. That is true. Um, when you when you read a review they they point that out that it's not like a Whopper or a Big Mac where every freaking Whopper is going to be exactly the same. There is going to be a little bit of variation based on the nuances of that leaf, of that roller, of, of that blend. And um, so the, it, it does like um, I've read a lot of reviews of the uh, the RP90, the Rocky Patel Vintage 1990, and. Um, they talk about how like some, 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 some aficionados, they taste this when they smoke it, other people will smoke it and they taste this over here. And they talk about how, like, as they're doing that review, they didn't pick up those notes. Another person did pick up the notes. Um, you know, John and I, we don't, we don't rehearse this. We, we didn't, we didn't prep this as far as like, ha we didn't know anything about the cigar before I just told him, Hey, this is what, this is what we're smoking today. This is yeah. what the sponsor gave us. And so when we identify the notes and like we both picked up on the butterscotch and we both picked up that it was absent in the second third and we both picked up that it came back in the, in the final third um that's that was not scripted that's just that's that's what happens when you you taste and you smell it and you you really pay attention um because you want to get if you're paying you know between 10 and 20 dollars for a cigar um you want to say that you've gotten every last drop of what the experience for that cigar is supposed to be yeah. so you always want to optimize that um, and so it's not just an exercise in snobbery or pretentiousness that we talk about it you know oh, now if we were those guys who was all like oh I'm tasting a bit of of leather but not leather from a wallet but rather from a belt that's been around the waist of a 350 pound offensive lineman who's suffering a bit of cheese you know like that's that's a level of description that's that's it's pedantic it's ridiculous um you know we, we we try to we try to get us as 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 detailed and specific with those flavor notes as as the cigar commands and uh, what do you uh what what is what is this uh cigar cost um i want to say it was I, i'll i'm gonna find out exactly what it is i'll put it like right here i want to say it was less than ten dollars Okay, so it's less than ten dollars. I want to say it was less than ten, and I would say that that's right on the money of what you should pay for it. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, if this if this is a nine dollar stick, that's a good deal. Yeah. 
Uh, that is a great stick for nine bucks. Um, Cause I've, I've had some that were $6 and you're just like, get it out of my face. And then I've had other $6 ones where I'm like, this should yeah. be a lot more yeah. money. Um, there are some Padrones that are in the seven to $10 range, which are great. Yeah. They're, they are legit 90 rated and they yeah. are seven bucks and they're very good. But not not all. I have a feeling that when it comes to the ratings, that sometimes there's a little bit of insider, you know, insider trading, and they they kind of grease the wheels of the reviewer to give them a ninety. Because if it's a true ninety, I should never be like, I don't want to finish this, you know. But I've had some nineties where I'm just like, eh, this ain't that great, you know. Um, and that's not just because of your palate. That's because yeah, it's probably a, a really crappy cigar. It's just, it's just, it's just a. Uh, substandard, you know. Well, I'm about to be on the too hard of it, and it's falling apart now. Yeah, I'm about I, to be done. Yeah. So, any any final thoughts? I mean, we've given our our final review. Um, what I want to say is that uh, this has been a real treat. I've enjoyed this, and um, it's getting hot. I can't wait to. Uh, well, one thing we didn't talk about is the buzz. So. By the time I finished my first third, I was high. This this thing has some nicotine in it. Yeah. Um, you you would think for a Connecticut that it would be like a lower dosage, but that really isn't always how it works. Um, I've had some really really dark Maduros that were very easy and didn't really jump on top of you. Uh, other times I've had some Connecticut's like this that I was just like I am high as fuck right now, um, and that just kind of happens. Um, this one this one had a fair amount fair amount of nicotine in it and um i tried not to talk too fast because i know i tend to speed up when i'm going um but but it was it it's that's another aspect of the experience that's nice is the way it's like a, it sharpens your mental acuity you just like like a little laser focus it's it's pretty nice uh it's good for um creativity stuff like that but um i definitely want to um uh, take our show our future shows and and go into more um more offshoots more more additional topics you know and just kind of circle back to the cigar as we get through it but um I, I like that we went on a little bit of a journey but kept ourselves rooted and then we start bringing some guests on we do have some guests lined up for future episodes yeah, so uh really excited about that we got some got some very very knowledgeable cigar guys um we're, we're, our goal is to uh, get you as excited about the world of cigars as we are. And within the world of cigars, there, there are additional substrata of other worlds because you have um, you know, your, your cigars that you can buy at your na local neighborhood cigar shop. But then you have the world of the Cuban cigar, the Havana, which I, uh, we, we recently started to experience, which is a whole whole nother world that we will uh, expose you to in a future episode yep but patience grasshopper all in good time so we're gonna we're gonna knock a few more of these out where we uh just cover the different styles um i haven't even decided what we're gonna do next time but it'll be good and uh oh yeah i think we might have we, we might bring a, a guest on for that one a special guest right right so yeah, well, I'm at the McNubbin, so this is us going to sign off right now, and uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, there is definitely going to be a surprise in the next one. you have anything else you want to say? No, no. Until next time, I'm Alex Stanford, and I'm a scholar. I'm John Welsh, and I'm a gentleman. Good night. Uh -huh.